Hello there, guys, and welcome to Genovate. Nano Banana now lives in Photoshop. No plugins or scripts required. And in this video, I will show you exactly how to access Nano Banana and other image models inside of Photoshop. But first, let me say a big thank you to all the channel's subscribers and followers for the great support. We have now surpassed 500 subscribers. And I'm very grateful for all the encouraging comments and the support that you have given to the channel. Let's get started. Please note that Nano Banana can currently only be accessed through the beta version of Photoshop. To download the beta version of Photoshop, launch your Creative Cloud desktop and then head over to Apps. From the Apps, select Beta and download Photoshop Beta. Next, we're going to click Open to launch Adobe Photoshop Beta. This is the IDE of the Photoshop Beta version. We are going to click on New File, and we are going to select uh, a photo, and we're going to just click on the default Photoshop size, and we're going to click on Create. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to generate an image, and what I'm going to ask for is uh, something in the countryside. So I'm going to prompt for a wide shot of the English countryside with a lot of grass uh, during the day, something typical of the southern part of the United Kingdom. And here is the prompt, wide shot of the English countryside with grass areas typical of the southern part of the United Kingdom during the day. And we're going to leave everything here the same and just going to go ahead and click on generate. And now it's generating with Firefly image three. And we're just going to wait for the results. We'll pick the result that is most suitable for what we want to do in this tutorial video. So now we have three images created by Adobe Firefly. This is the first image, the second and the third. And I think I'm going to use the second image here to showcase some of the powerful features uh, that are available uh, in Photoshop with Nano Banana. So we're going to select the brush tool, which is located here, Selection Brush Tool. You can adjust the size of it. And then we're going to come to this area here, and we are going to highlight it. And then, as you can see now, it says Generative Fill. So I'm going to click that. And now I can select the model. I can either use Firefly Image 3, Image 1, Flux Context Pro, or I can use Gemini 2.5, which is Nano Banana. I'm going to type in here, let's add a uh, red tractor. So here's the prompt, very basic, add red farm tractor. And we're going to click on generate. And as you can see now, generating with Gemini 2.5 Nano Banana appears here. And let's wait for the results and see what it comes back with. And as you can see, we now have a red farming tractor here. Let me increase the size here of the image. Now you can see here there is a here. Let's let's do this here. And we're going to come back here. And as you can see now, we have a red, red tractor, red farming tractor, which looks pretty good in my opinion. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come to this area here of the image. Let me zoom out a little bit and we're going to come right over this area here and I'm going to select this area and we're just going to add some cows grazing on grass. So we're going to click the generative fill and let's add our prompt. Right. So here's the prompt cows grazing on grass and let's go ahead and click on generate. And again, it's using nano banana to uh, generate the image. Let's see what it comes back with. All right, now as you can see, we have the cows here, which is pretty cool. And notice that it actually takes care of the distance. So the depth of field is actually taken care of and estimated based on where I have placed the cows relative, for example, the tractor. So you can see here that the tractor is closer in view uh, here. So it appears bigger in size, whereas the cows look far in the distance and they are obviously grazing on grass. All right, let's take this further and we're going to come to this area here and we're going to say, um, let's put here. So we're just going to add some horses now. And here's the prompt, horses grazing on grass. And we're just going to click generate again. 
And now we want to take a look at what Nano Banana does inside of Photoshop. Now, the beauty of this, guys, is that this image was created using AI and all the elements placed on the image are also uh, created using AI. And it is just so seamless. And now you can see the horses here, uh, again, grazing on grass, which is pretty cool. Now we're going to take this a little bit further and we are going to go to this area here. We're going to add a English countryside home with some smoke from the top of the house. So we're going to click here and we're going to add a generative fill. And here is the prompt, uh, English countryside home with smoke from the top. We're going to click on generate and again, wait for Nano Banana to generate the house for us. Doesn't really take very long. And now we can see that we have the complete scene of uh, the English countryside. All right, so this hasn't really come. Uh, so let's go ahead and generate this again. Sometimes this does happen. So we'll generate it again. And maybe the position is not exactly right. So we're just going to click one more time. All right, so now it has fixed this. And let me just zoom in a little bit uh, so you guys can see the house. And you can see that it has followed the prompt exactly and created the house with the little smoke coming out. And now you have a perfect picture of the English countryside here with cows, horses, a farm tractor, and a house. Now, the beauty of Nano Banana and Photoshop is that all of the elements that we've added are actually layers. So when you click the select tool, you can see that I can now select those items and you can change their positions and regenerate the, uh, the actual item. So we're going to take the horses now and we're going to take the horses and bring the horses maybe here and we're going to click on generate. And now what it's going to do, it's going to recalculate the position of the horses, the size of the horses relative to the new position and it's going to position them here. And here's what we're going to do next. We are going to also take the tractor and change the position. You can see now that the horses, this is brilliant. Uh, just by really changing the, you know, the position uh, of the horses and we can move it maybe a little bit, uh, maybe actually you can make it smaller or bigger. So I can actually make this a little bigger, right? Like that. And I can say done and generate. So now we want to make the horses a little bigger, kind of give it a little bit of better depth uh, to make the horses look closer to, uh, you know, to, to, the, uh, to the lens taking the picture of this scene. So now you have the horses here and it is seamless. You see how it has moved the horses from the initial position. Now you can actually do the same thing with the, with the cows. So if you wanted to move the cows, so we can actually move the cows right there somewhere and we can make this a bit closer. Uh, so uh, we can put them right there. And now we're going to say done and we're going to say generate. And now we effectively will take the cows from the position here and move them over to that side. You can also do things like changing the weather, changing the time of day and things like that. Now, as you can see, the cows have been moved to this area here near the country home, which is very, very powerful, guys. This feature is just excellent. And I just, um, I was really, I was oozing with excitement when I saw what you can actually do with Nano Banana and Photoshop. The next use case that we're going to be taking a look at is really editing an image with a, a human. So this is an image from open art that I've created of uh, this lady. And you can actually click on select subject. And when you click here, you'll see that Photoshop has now automatically detected the subject in, in this picture. Now we're going to give it a very simple prompt. We're just going to make her wear, uh, let's say, uh, red lipstick. Let's do that. So we're going to say generative fill. Again, we're going to make sure that this is on Nano Banana. And we're going to just say she is wearing red lipsticks. All right, so here's the prompt. She is wearing red lipstick, and that's it. And we're just going to click on Generate. Now we can see that the uh, Nano Banana is doing its magic. And there you have it. The lady is now wearing red lipstick. I mean, this is really cool. All right. Now we're going to change things a little bit. Let's, for example, make her with short hair. So 
uh, the same lace. So she's wearing red lipstick, and we're going to extend this and say, and she has short hair. All right, and let's go ahead and click on generate. And there you have it. Look at this. Look at how powerful this is, guys. Now she is actually, um, she has now the red lipstick and she has shorter hair, which is exactly what we prompted for. Let's take this further. And now we're going to say that she is wearing red lipstick. She has short hair and she's sitting at an urban cafe with a friend having coffee. All right, so our full prompt, now reads, she is wearing red lipstick, she has short hair, and sitting at an urban cafe with a friend and having coffee. Let's click on generate and see what Nano Banana comes back with. And there you have it. She is now sitting the same lady with her red lipstick, with the short hair, now sitting at an urban cafe with a friend, and they're having coffee. This is just amazing, guys. As you can see, folks, the power of a nano banana inside Photoshop is limitless and it is only really limited by creativity. There's a lot of things that you can do with the images. Uh, you can add things, you can remove. So we can say here, for example, that she's having coffee uh, and let's say, uh, well, we're going to remove the friend. Uh, we're going to say alone. And, or actually we'll say, remove her friend, all right? Let's go ahead and try that. All right, so now we've prompted that she's having coffee alone and remove the friend. Let's go ahead and see if that works. And uh, we'll take a look at the result in just a second here. And there you have it, ladies and gents. Now the same lady with the same red lipstick, short hair, is now having coffee on her own without her friend. And as you can see, this is really very, very powerful because you can do multiple things and the only thing that you are limited by is your creativity. And this is, ladies and gents, how you use Nano Banana natively inside Photoshop with no scripts, no plugins. And I hope that those uh, couple of uh, use cases uh, that we've worked through this video are useful and insightful for you. So happy generating. Uh, ladies and gents, and until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.